Hey, Kids Fit Girl Food. Mrs. Kimball here with my special guest interviewer, Leah, that you all know probably. And we are here at Grove Restaurant in Grand Rapids with executive chef Jeremy Packman. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so we talk all the time about getting kids in the kitchen. We want kids to be involved yeah. with food. We want them to try new things. And so I thought it would be really fun Boy. to interview someone who works with food all day long. Cool. I think it's fun too. And uh, so what's what's your job? How long have you been doing this? Oh, my job is head chef here at Grove Restaurant. Uh, I have been here two years at Grove. I've been cooking since I was young, almost as young as her. Um, a little afterwards, I started cooking, and it's just kind of always what I've done. Okay. And so, head chef, what yeah. does that mean? What do you do day to what day? What does that do? Day to day, what do I do? I, uh, I order food from local farms. I write schedules. I work the line. I prep. Work the line means chopping stuff? Chopping stuff is prepping all day and then uh -huh. jump on the line at night when we start getting customers uh -huh. and make sure that I'm cooking and organizing. And yes, yeah, so not on that side. We're still, we're, we cook a lot here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're always doing that. That's awesome. So what's out of everything you get to use, what's yeah. your favorite kitchen tool? Oh, what is my favorite kitchen tool? Probably a vegetable peeler. The peeler? I know, such a simple, simple thing. Peelers are super cool. I mean, you can shave vegetables. You could take a carrot and just keep shading it, shading it, shading it, so then you get nice salad ingredients. You can take it and obviously it's such a utilitarian thing. I mean, I'm sure everybody says knives or kitchen aids or fancy equipment. Yeah. I like the simple stuff. Like there's, I can do with out any of the other stuff, but I need like a peeler, I need a knife, I need some basic stuff, but I like the peeler. Uh -huh. You can make chips out of it. You can do all kinds of stuff with a vegetable peeler. I'm, I'm suddenly thinking we're gonna do another video right, right. with our kids yes. and just peel stuff. Just peel stuff. We can peel lots of stuff. I peel everything. You pe and you're not just peeling to get the peel off, you peel it I to peel make it the shapes. I peel it to make the shapes, to use it for a salad, to fry it, and for a garnish. Peel it. I Got love another peeler. That. Got another peeler. What? Which shape? The Y or the straight? I like the Y. Wait a minute. I like the Y. I will struggle <laughs> with the straight every once in a while, and then if I can't find the Y, thank goodness we have a couple of them. Uh -huh. But we have a straight one too, and every once in a while I get stuck with it, and it's it's not very pretty. I know. See, I'm so <laughs> glad you said that. Yes, it's, we it's totally the Y. It's the, the Y. y. <laughs> so fast. So fast. What's your favorite food, and what was your favorite what is my favorite food? Well, today, as an adult, my favorite food is vegetables. So anything with vegetables, believe it or not. How um, do you cook them? How do I cook them? Um, in any way I can. I like to, you know, even at Grove here, we like to make vegetables interesting. So I like to treat a vegetable like it's a protein. So it's about sauces and textures. And I may take a carrot and I may poach it in duck fat. And then I may take it and grill it so I can get charred flavor on it. And we even smoke vegetables. So we'll smoke vegetables. So just really treating it like a piece of meat adds so much more flavor, and obviously it's so much better for you. And so I like, our thing is to make vegetables interesting, fun to eat. We'll make them into cakes, and breads, and anything we can do with the vegetables since we buy so many from the local farms is kind of a challenge. Um, as a kid, it wasn't vegetables. I wish it was. I know, can you believe it? I, can. I can't believe it. I, I totally was, can. I was. I wasn't a vegetable kid, I wish I was. But now, I don't know if we had so much access, we have so much more access to good vegetables, so it's a little different. I think um, as a kid, my favorite food was probably my mother's meatloaf. Aww. She made a pretty mean meatloaf, and uh, she still make it every once in a while if I ask very nicely. So that was my favorite food. That's pretty good. What's your first memory of working in the kitchen? The first memory of working in the kitchen. Well, I don't have one of those stories where I was on a stool when I was a kid. I, my grandmother owned a restaurant. And so when I was 11 years old, I was living in Texas, I used to fly up to Michigan every summer until I was 14 and work in her restaurant. So that was my favorite memory, and those are my first memories, um, was able to work with her, and she used to just make bread and very simple food, but it was really, really fun, it's how we got to spend time together, and it's where I first got really interested in cooking, um, and maybe thought I wanted to do it for a living. Who taught me to cook? Well, a bunch of cooks in kitchens throughout my life. My grandmother, mostly. Um, but really, it was it was her, and then it was just working around other cooks. So every restaurant I would go into, I would learn from other people that I was around. I still learn stuff today from all the people that I work around because they're all very creative and they all have great ideas, and we can all learn from one another back there. So that's kind of how we do it. That's super cool. So. You didn't really get in the kitchen before you were 11? Like no, in your own no, no. We were a very busy household. Uh, my brothers and sisters, so there wasn't a ton of, uh, of cooking. We were just happy to all sit together and eat. So uh -huh. that was our goal, you know? So it was later on. Yeah. And then I just went from there and I 
I just decided that this is what I want to do. And that was a long time ago. And now you have a 12 year old. I do have a 12 year old. Does she get in the kitchen? Mia does get in the kitchen. She will help her dad out. She actually helped me not long ago with, we'll do a dinner outside of the restaurant or we're out and about. She comes and helps and tags along and she's a restaurant kid. So she grew up in restaurants. Uh -huh. So she knows how it goes and uh, she does, she's great at it. That's cool. Do you have any tips for parents on like getting their kids involved and how early? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you can get them involved, I think just make it fun. You know, that's the key. It's how do you make cooking fun, which cooking is fun. I mean, cooking is a big science experiment. Yeah. You know, it really is. So, you know, baking is especially fun with kids. I taught Mia, you know, when we were younger, we baked. And now she can do a little more. Um, it helps, I guess, when your dad's a chef. But, uh, you know, it's um, just fun. Just just let them have fun with it and enjoy it. And it teaches all kinds of life lessons cooking does. You know, lots of failures come from cooking. You know, mm -hmm. some of our best stuff and our best ideas have come because we failed at a dish. And it's like, oh, we want this. It's perfect. Yeah. You know, no, that's so good. You know, it's and so hands on and yes. real hands on. It's just so hands on. So it keeps them occupied, and they can really enjoy it. Yeah, we find like in in teaching, there are some kids who just aren't a great fit for school. Right? Sure. They're struggling. Absolutely. They're busy. They're bouncing sure. around. But cooking tends to be amazing. Yeah. For especially those kids. Oh, absolutely. Anyone, really. Yeah, I I find cooking therapeutic most days. Uh -huh. So you know, when it's not as stressful, I'll kind of put myself in a corner and make pasta. And it's like, oh, perfect. This is great. I oh, can focus fun. and. You know, and just complete a task. It's a, it's a gratifying experience, and I think even for the kids, you get to see an end product. You start with nothing really, and then you get to see something come out of it that everyone enjoys. that everyone enjoys. So it's a win all the way around. Totally a win. So we also love to talk about learning from our mistakes. You mentioned failures. Do you have tons of failures? Do you have like a story that goes with a, a kitchen fail that you can share? Oh, how many do you want? I mean, well, we, we fail. We fail on a regular basis. Um, I don't know. Here, if, here in the restaurant. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we all fail. Mm -hmm. I know everybody thinks I can't believe it. You guys just that would never happen. Yes. I mean, um, well, I would probably failed last week on a million things. Um, it could be as something as this: the souffle not working, or we're trying out a new technique and we're maybe a little overly confident that day and then it doesn't work out the way you want to and you're sure. just like, wow, I can't believe this worked out. It goes to even following recipes. You know, you can get a cookbook and follow a recipe and go, well, that just didn't work. Yeah. And um, so we're constantly failing and constantly learning and sometimes it just, it, it works out and then that's how we learn and we know what at least what not to do the next time and we know that that's an impossibility And but we experiment a lot. So a lot of it is failure. So whether it's... Um, making powders out of vegetable scraps or dehydrating things, you know, it, we just learn all the time. We're constantly learning. So you kind of, chefs. like, to be a chef, it sounds like you have to have that mindset of, like, I'm going to try the next thing. I'm going to do oh, something, yes. something, anything. Like, <laughs> you have to be really, really excited, and then you have to be able just to let it roll off your back when it just doesn't work out the way you want it to. you got to be able to laugh at yourself a little bit, and we do a lot of laughing. We had a couple of strawberry fails, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, yes. Do you want to talk about one of them? Strawberries. Uh -huh. and I looked up. I looked up recipes for sure. strawberries on Pinterest. Sure. And everything looks good. Everything yeah. looks great yeah. on so Pinterest. So it looked delicious, <laughs> and I couldn't find the uh, measurement. Right. So I just tried it, and it did not turn out <laughs> well. Well, that's how we learn, though. So we know now that yeah, especially in. And pastry, I, I have to make sure, I always say, you know, there's a lot more science in baking and pastry, so I always really like to reference a recipe. And you'd be surprised, as, as, as much as we cook day in and day out, you'll see us open a cookbook. We're not that great. We, we open cookbooks and we reference old recipes or we'll take something that we know works and we'll change the vegetable or change the fruit. But yeah, it happens all the time. But you kept going, didn't you? Yeah. Well, there you go. I did say frozen strawberries and strawberries. Yeah, yeah. Too many. When you're tweaking, there's changes. And in baking, that can get weird. When we do all the hot food cooking, that's very easy. We're like, well, just substitute this for that. It's fine. We know it'll work. We can make it the way it needs. Pastry, on the other hand, I've had some mistakes like that. You can't, you know, it needs what it needs, I think. I think it's one of those things where you don't have as much uh, wiggle room on it. Yeah. I like what you just said. That's kind of a good recipe to make a recipe for kids is yeah. start with something that works and change one thing. That, that, that's, See what that's happens. That's kind of what we do. You know, some of our favorite things are, it's since we're so vegetable driven, it's just kind of like, well, I've worked with that vegetable. Why can't I do it with this vegetable? Or it worked with that. Why can't I? And that's, that's really how it goes along. You just learn over time and practice what works and what goes together. And you still experiment on stress. Trust me, we try all kinds of things. Just sometimes they're really great and then sometimes they're not.
Now, parents get a little worried about getting their kids in the kitchen with fire. Sure. Knives. Sure. All that stuff. Yeah. Have, have you ever had any kitchen accidents? I've had ki- I have had tons of kitchen accidents. Um, my daughter's had kitchen accidents. Oh, no. She, she was using a mandolin not too long ago, and she might look maybe a little piece of, you know, skin off or so. But, you know, you just... It's, it's going to happen. You know, I think it's like riding a bike. It's sure. like you, we walk them, we walk them, we walk them, and then we push and the training wheels are off and you just kind of wing it. So it's just proper instruction. Knife handling skills, techniques, open flames, obviously hot surfaces. I think it's just more letting them know what to be careful of and then spending time with them in the kitchen and showing them the ways and the proper ways. And I, I think it's probably the best approach, hands-on or real hands-on. So. And that's definitely, I mean, that's what we try to do in our classes, yeah. we have videos and we yeah. talk about what's hot, what's not, yeah, we work absolutely. with the stove with it off and yeah. talk about everything. And so important. Definitely. So important. That. What would you say is like primary skill that parents want to make sure their kids understand in the kitchen? Ooh, the primary skill, Pro- probably cutting safety, you know, knife skills. Knife skills can change everything, you yeah. know, if all your vegetables are the same size, they usually cook the same. And, and just really how to use a knife. It also works for your speed and your efficiency, so you can be faster as a cook. You know, things aren't so daunting. I would say that is the most important, just singular thing in the kitchen, would be the safety angle and just precision. That might also be what we focus on. Yeah, so maybe. I'm pretty encouraged that good, you said that. Good, good, <laughs> good. That's cool. Um, now, when you think about making like a beautiful dish, yeah. what what gets you excited? How healthy it's going to be, or how delicious it's going to be, or is there a, Ooh, like a relationship? A tr- there is a. I think there is a relationship there, especially for us because we have the unique opportunity to be using so many vegetables in our cooking. Because you work here at Grove. Because of here at Grove. Is that how you worked before you worked? Yeah, here? I was is a farm to table you? chef for okay. fifteen years. Okay. So um, I had my own restaurant for a long period of time. That's all we did was farm to table okay. style of food. So it was always. So I think healthiness is, is, is truly important to us because I know we're using the freshest, best vegetables we can get, so that aspect alone is kind of there. And then it's it, it's a matter, of course, I mean, everybody wants pretty food and tasty food. I mean, uh, we eat with our eyes first, so we always want our food to look pretty when it comes out because that gives you the immediate, like, wow, this is cool. And if you're a kid cooking, don't worry too much about that part. Yeah. I mean, that's fun. Yeah. That's fine. If your dish looks kind of funky, yeah. Yeah. It anyway. it's, it's cool. Like, it's, you're an artist. You're your own artist. <laughs> you know, you, I don't, yeah, it's up to you. Um, and then, of course, you want it to taste good because they, they do go hand in hand. And, and hopefully, we're, as every dish isn't healthy, we know there's some things that are not as healthy as the next thing when we're eating a bunch of desserts and making ice creams. But um, it's it's definitely that they both play a role. They are synonymous with one another. You want, it to, you want to feel good after you eat it. You want it to taste good. You know, and we all of those thoughts go through our head when we're creating any dish. So many conversations about one plate of food. It's pretty pretty amazing. That is fun. That's very exciting. What would you say to kids about trying new foods? Trying new foods. Well, knowing that I have a 12-year-old, I've been through this um, about trying new foods. And it's, you know, it's, it, it's like anything else. Try it and then make up your mind. You know, give it a shot. Um, you might like it just because it may not look like something you normally eat or it's something completely unusual that you've never had at home, give it a shot before you, you know, before you make up your mind that it's just gross or you don't want it. Just say, hey, I'm going to give it a shot and if you don't like it, no problem. Yeah. You don't have to eat it. Well, and like you said, gosh, I mean, you're out there grilling carrots. So Absolutely. If, I, if I've eaten a baby carrot and it wasn't my favorite. Yeah, you ate a raw baby carrot and you're like, I, I don't like still... carrots, but you can try it a different way. Yeah. And, and that's what it is. And that's what, what we focus on. And you can make it a little more interesting. Or you might have it a different way where it'll transform something so simple by maybe just a small cooking process. It just tastes completely different. Yeah. You know, especially in, in fruits and vegetables where, you know, heat breaks down sugars and it, it, it caramelizes and all kinds of flavor can come out of the simplest of things. So try it a couple of different ways. You know, don't do it once and just give up. Maybe you just need to try it from someone else or just try it a different way. So that's why like a raw food tastes different than a cooked food. No tastes question. Tastes different than a food cooked longer. Or longer or braised or smoked or yes. seared or all completely. It's amazing that you could, that would, you know, that's the fun of it. You can take the same vegetable and just, you can change the flavor so often, but it's the exact same vegetable. You're not really altering what you're doing to it, just the method of cooking. Sure. And yeah. You're not adding a ton of ingredients to it. It's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so, like, don't give me canned asparagus. Yeah. No, I don't want it. But, and but if you've ever had it that way, oh, 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 it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> a little vinegar, it's going to taste amazing. Or if you 
grill it. I mean, it's just going to add so many different textures and layers to it. And, and I think you know, textures are really important for kids. You know, they yes. don't like the way things are. They, you know, people are mushier. They, textures. They move. Yeah. But as adults, we grow into thinking the same way. Uh -huh. So when we're you know when we're developing dishes, we think textures and how to taste and how to eat. And uh, all of those thoughts go through our heads. You just mentioned adding vinegar. I yeah. feel like that is the top thing on a little bag of tricks that you can tell kids to I, like, add a little add vinegar. Add a little vinegar. vinegar. When you're eating that dish and you're wondering what's missing, it's either salt or vinegar. Okay. Or both, normally, because vinegar just kind of brightens everything up. Any kind of vinegar? Any, any kind of vinegar. We use apple cider vinegar. Um, it, my go-to is lemon juice, so that's the acid that I like to add is just always lemon juice. Okay. But if you don't have lemon juice at home because you don't have a bunch of lemons laying around because, I mean, you're not making fresh lemonade, maybe then you can go to vinegar. A little apple cider vinegar, a little balsamic vinegar would be great if we're talking asparagus, you know. And that brightens it up. It brightens everything Which is up. an interesting phrase because bright is like light on yeah, our eyes. Yeah, absolutely. So not it may, what we think about. No, it may vegetable. take something that you think is very plain and it just gives you that pop to where uh, you're really interested in it and just change the whole idea of it, so. That is a great tip. We gotta try that. We gotta try that. All right, so I love to raise the bar for kids. I think kids yeah. should be expected to do bigger things and eat more things. So I, completely agree. I want you to give them a chef's challenge for this week of any sort that you want. You I think a it. good challenge for this week would be to try to make homemade pasta. It's so simple. It's like three ingredients. I promise anybody can do it. You don't need any special equipment. You can have a rolling pin mm -hmm. and you can make pasta. You don't have to have a kitchen aid. You don't have anything fancy. Make a simple fresh pasta. So easy. That's cool. And actually, are you going to show us how to do this? Well, yeah, we can show you how to do it. Well, let's go make some pasta. Cool, huh? Okay, Sergio, I don't know how to make pasta. Will you show me? I would love to show you how to make pasta. Pasta is so simple. I think everybody thinks it's so hard to make, but it's so easy. And watch. We have regular flour. Perfect. We have the semolina flour. A little bit of salt. Before we add our last ingredient, Water. We're gonna mix it up with our hands. Don't you mix it up? Oh, you're doing great. Put a little well in the center. I'm gonna add a little water while you keep mixing. You ready? It's gonna get dirty. Keep mixing. It. Yeah, I'll help you. Now you can start kind of working it a little. See how it's coming together? It'll all stick together at some point. So now we have this ball of dough. We're gonna take it and we're gonna knead it. Down, full, down, full, and just keep doing that until it gets smooth see how dry it was and then you're gonna see how nice it is once we need it a little bit. So you don't need any special equipment to make pasta. You can do this right at home, just your hands, some flour, some salt, and a little water. What does smooth look like? Well, let's see here. Smooth looks something like this finished one. Ooh, magic. <laughs> look at it. See how it's smooth? Feel it. Feel this one. This one's been refrigerated. And that's cool about pasta is you can do this the day before. So it doesn't have to be today. You can just wrap it in plastic, put it in the refrigerator, Pull it out tomorrow, 30 minutes before you want to cook it, and then we'll do what we're going to do, which is we're going to make spaghetti. We're going to do it with a peachy noodle, which is spaghetti. So I'll take a piece. I'm going to give you a piece. Are you ready? Do that to your hands. Okay, let's go. Yeah, so keep equal pressure in the middle. So then we'll take it like this. Now, what I'll do, so we could we could roll all this dough out if we wanted into these kind of snakes. And then we'll take the snakes, and we're gonna cut them into little pieces. Grab your little Tootsie Roll, and do the same thing. Except this time, roll it thin. As thin as you can get it without it falling apart. And then you just continue on with the process. Wow. So, you know, next time you wanna just drop the spaghetti in the water sink. Mom, I can make peachy noodles now because Chef Jeremy showed me how. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? I cook it. You just drop it in salted water. Noodles take about four to five minutes. You want them a little chewy. They're supposed to be. You know, it's not like store-bought pasta. It's homemade. So you want to be a little chewy, and then you can take it out and just toss in a little olive oil, a little salt, a little lemon if you want, and keep it real simple, which I like because you spend so much time working on these beautiful noodles. Did you have fun? You're very welcome. Thank you. All right.